let's take a look for a minute about on how a sock is constructed. Um, this is what I made oh a couple of years ago, and this was knit from the cuff down. So I started with my ribbing here, and I knitted this uh, pattern. This is just a seed stitch variation. It's I think it's called Hermione's something. I forget. Um, I can put a link to it down below. But it's knitted from the cuff down. So when we get to here, we knitted our heel flat, and then you pick up stitches along this edge right here, and you pick up the stitches and knit this way, joining back up with the top, okay? Joining back up with this, and we decrease as we go down, and that's what creates that gusset. So this is a heel flap and gusset technique. Now, this is the way that I learned, and the book that I've mentioned several times earlier, Folk Socks by Nancy Bush, the classic sock pattern that I learned first with is exactly this. And it creates, you do a slip stitch on the back of the heel flap, which creates a kind of an extra thick padded heel on the flap, which is great if you tend to wear your socks out on the back of your heel, that provides some extra reinforcement. However, I tend to wear my socks on the bottom of my heel, as do I think most people, because you know that's where you walk. Um, so there's lots of other techniques for doing heels, and when you're knitting from the toe going this direction, when you're knitting from the toe up, still people do this very same thing, where they instead of decreasing to create the gusset, they increase, and then they knit the flap, and they do everything in reverse. So I thought, well, why can't we just do the exact same thing, but flip it, okay? So here's an example of one that I did that way, where I put the heel reinforcement or the heel flap is on the bottom where you walk, and it makes a really nice cushy, you know, reinforced padded bottom of the heel. And then you can continue that slip stitch back when you do this. So we're doing the same technique, you know, in reverse. Does that make sense? Okay, so I saw, I've only seen one other person do it this way on a different YouTube video, and there was a huge debate in the comment section about how, no, that's not a heel flap and gusset, and I'm like, well, why isn't it? You're still knitting a flap, you're still creating this gusset. It is a heel flap and gusset, it's just not what you're used to seeing, and it's been turned on its head. It's, it's just upside down. But these socks work well for me. Well, actually, they don't, and the reason... <laughs> I they, they they work well. They do work well in that this padding has held up and this reinforced bottom has held up. I did not take into consideration the height of my arch, which is right here. And I tend to have a little bit higher arch. And so I needed to knit this part a little um bigger around in diameter. Now the way that we do that is we can control that by how tall we or how long we make the heel flap okay so that's the point we're at right now you've knitted this part of the foot and you're stopping right here so what we're going to do on the bottom of the foot stitches is separate off half the stitches that we started with so if you have 72 you would take your sole stitches which would be 36 and you use that to make your heel flap now most most patterns will tell you to make your heel flap now not this curvy part but your heel flap here up to where the curvy part starts, this is your heel flap. Most of the time, the patterns end up being telling you to knit that in a square. Well, how tall this square is, if it becomes a rectangle, then that means you have more stitches here to pick up, and it will be, this will be longer, your heel flap will be longer, which means your gusset will be taller, and this will be bigger around. So the point of all this is that you want to do a minimum of a, of a square, and I'll show you how to calculate that when we get into the nitty gritty of it. You want that to be a minimum of a square, but I like to knit mine a little bit longer so that that creates that wider or bigger diameter opening for my higher arches, okay? So I just wanted to kind of show you the difference between the cuff down heel flap with the reinforcement on the back of the heel and my version of the heel flap for the purpose of a toe up sock. Okay? All right, let's get to it. Okay, we have finished knitting the foot of our sock from the toe up, and we're ready to begin the heel flap that we talked about. Okay, what you need to do 
is use half of your total number of stitches for the heel flap. So for me, that's my sole needle, or the as opposed to the top of the foot needle. And so I have a total of 72, so that makes 36 stitches for me. And to make that reinforced heel that I'm talking about, um, that's going to require us to slip the first stitch of each row. And when we do that, we're going to slip as if to purl. You can slip as if to knit if you want to twist that stitch. That's entirely up to you. What we want to do for this first knitting row, I like to knit it straight across because if we were to slip this first stitch, like I mentioned, as if to purl, if I were to do that, I'd be pulling this and carrying this all the way across when I knit the next one. I'd do, be pulling that across from the back cable, and I don't necessarily prefer to do that. You know, it would probably just all even out in the end, but I would rather begin my slip stitch sequence without that. So I'm going to choose to just knit this first row straight across. All right, as we get to the end, when you get to the very last stitch, knit that into the back loop. The reason that we do that is that the stitches like this, we're going to turn it, whoops, the stitches like this, with my thumb forward, we're going to turn it so that it faces, the stitch will face out. You'll see. It makes a really nice chain edge if you continue to do that, and you will appreciate that when we go to pick up the stitches later and knit the other direction. I'm having trouble finding the other half of my needle. Okay. Now what we want to do is we're, we're ignoring the, the top of the foot half. We're ignoring that. We're not going to use that at all right now. What we're doing simply is knitting back. We're going to purl back because we have the wrong side facing us. We're going to purl back the other way. Slipping the first stitch. Slip the first one and then just purl, purl your way on back. All right, we'll finish up and purl our last one. Okay. Now we've done two rows, we're simply going to turn your work over so the right side is facing you again. And now we'll, we, we will begin, whoops, I got my needle tucked into the other loop here. There we go. Now we're going to start our slip stitch pattern. So it's simply slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one. So when we slip one, we're going to do it as if to purl. Okay. You can do it as if to knit if you want to. What that will do is just twist your stitch and make it a, a more exaggerated line. And you'll, you'll see what I mean by that later. But I'm going to slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one. And you're just going to carry it on the whole way across that way. So since we have an even number of stitches and we're slipping one, knitting one, we slip the first one, and we will end up knitting the last. And so when we get to the last stitch, again, we're going to knit the last one into the back loop. Knit through the back loop. When you see that in a pattern abbreviation, I think it's written as KBL, knit through the back loop. I'll have to look that up. So we have 36 36 stitches. I have 36 stitches on my needle. So I'm going to do this sequence. See, I'm knitting through the back loop here. I'm going to do this sequence where I slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one. I'm going to do that on the knit side. I'm going to turn over, slip the first one, and purl back across. I'm going to do that two round, two row sequence 18 times at least since I have 36 stitches. So that's the math there. I have 36 stitches across. I'm gonna do that two round or two row sequence 18 times. So that gives me 36 rows. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I choose to have a taller knit or a taller heel flap than that because I have a higher instep or a higher arch. And so I will probably do this sequence 20 times or 40 rows total. And you will have to measure, we'll measure when we get done and we'll see, you can stop and measure. That is the beauty of the toe up method is that you can stop and try it on and make sure that it's working for you. 
Okay, I'm probably, I don't know, maybe a third to half, probably a third of the way through my heel flap, maybe a little more than a third. Um, but you can really see how that, how that slip stitch ribbing or slip stitch pattern is really kind of coming out. Um, the vertical columns here, that's, those are the stitches I have slipped. So that's good to know because we're going to want to carry that on in, when we turn the heel. And then I wanted to show you also the chain stitch edge that I was talking about. When you slip the first stitch of each row, you end up with a nice clean edge like that. See there? So that, that'll be easy to be able to pick up and get a needle underneath you know, later on. So that's one, right? So you end up with one of those for every two rows that you knit and purl. So if we want to count that edge, we'll count we'll count the number of those chain stitches that we have. And um, it's a little, you know, fiddly at the moment. But so we've got one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, I have 11 not counting the one that's on the needle. So that means that I've actually knitted back and forth 22 rows. So I'm gonna carry on with that until I have at least 18 because that's half the number of my 36 um, stitches on this needle. For me though, because I like my heel flap, like we mentioned earlier, to be longer, more rectangular so that I have that higher instep and more of a, a roomy top of the foot. I guess, and it makes it not so tight over over my heel. I'm gonna carry on until I have probably 20, maybe even 24 of those chain stitches on the edge. And obviously, you want to make sure that both your sides match. So if you have, you know, 19 over here and 20 over here, then you'd want to do one more row. So to so there you go. Carry on with that, and then we'll be ready for the magic of turning the heel. Okay, back to our sample sock. Um, what we're going to do now is since we've completed knitting the heel flap portion, we need to do this turning. It's literally called, good grief, you see I live with so many cats. Okay, so it's literally called turning the heel because that's what we're doing. We're turning our work, doing some short rows, and a short row, all that means is that we're going to be doing some short rows, meaning we knit part way, turn around and go back. We don't knit the complete row. So short rows are just exactly what they imply. You're just knitting part way and then going back. And we're gonna do that in order to change directions with our knitting so that we can knit up this way. And then once we get to here, we'll pick up these stitches along here and we'll knit up. And that is how we're gonna turn the 90 degree angle and be able to knit our leg. So looking at what I have here, we're gonna do the general formula and I will write all this out on the website, not to worry, and I'll upload a document into the Facebook group as well. So what we're gonna do here is slip the first stitch as if to purl, just like always, and we're gonna carry on in our existing pattern with slipping one, knit one, slip one, knit one, and we're gonna go halfway across to start with. Okay, so for me, that would be 18 stitches because I have 36 all together. So you're gonna go halfway across, slip one, Knit one, slip one, knit one. Okay, we'll just cruise our way across here. So I've knitted 18, and then the general rule of thumb, if you're just gonna try to memorize this, is you go across halfway, and then you would go two extra. So there's 19, and there's 20. Now what I'm gonna do is I want to make a left-leaning decrease. So I'm gonna, going to slip, slip. Now these, if you'll notice, I'm slipping knit-wise. Let me show you that again. I'm slipping them as if to knit, and I'm doing that on purpose because I want to turn this stitch so that it's facing up, if you will. I want to turn it 180 degrees. So slip, slip, then I'm going to knit those two stitches together, okay? Here, let me sh I'll show you that again. And this is, um, there is a decreasing video that shows this with bigger yarn and bigger needles, and I'll link to that up in the right-hand corner so that you can click over there if you want to. So slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, and then put your poke your left needle in there and then knit those two together. And then simply knit one. Okay, so you can see there where we've made that left-leaning decrease. 
Now we're going to turn our work. So just simply turn everything over, turn over, so you have the wrong side facing you. Let me adjust things here. And then you're going to slip one as if to purl and purl your way back. But we're not going all the way. We're going to purl back, I believe it's five. But what you want to do is purl back so that when we decrease on the other side, we'll have the same number of remaining stitches after this gap. You see how when we did the decrease, it left a gap. So let's count those real quick and see. And then it's okay if you don't understand right now, just, just follow along. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13. I have 13 on this side after the gap. But I think I want to slip one and purl five. Two, three, four, five. Then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. We're gonna make a decrease. We're gonna purl two together and then purl one. So if we do that, that'll take up three stitches, purling those two together and then purling one. So then we'll have our gap here where my fingers are. And we wanna make sure we have the same number of stitches left on this side that we do on the other side. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. 12, 13. So that will work, that's correct. So purl these two together, all right? Purl two together and then purl one. And now we have a gap and we're gonna turn our work. So we're gonna keep doing those short rows and that will make the, a little pocket for our heel to be. So same as before. Now if you want to carry on the slip stitch, you can do that with your knitting portion where you slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one. You can do that or you can abandon that if you don't think you need it on the back of your heel. I like adding that extra little bit of texture and I'll show you how I manage that because now we don't have an even number of stitches where it's all going to line up with our slip stitch columns. So we're going to have to fudge that a little bit. Um, we can see that this one, this one right here is a slip stitch column. So we know that's going to be a slip and a knit and a slip. So we're going to slip the first one here, knit, that's a slip because you can see where the column is, the raised column. But it's not always going to be this, the first one. You may have to adjust and like knit two and then get to your slipped column. It's not always going to be the same as we do these decreases. We will have an odd number. All right, now we've got to one before the gap. This is our gap and we want to close the gap. So we're going to do the same thing where we slip, slip, knit two together and that's how we're going to close the gap and then knit one okay now turn your work just simply turn it over so that the wrong side is facing you slip one as if to purl and purl back across until you get to one before the gap and then what do you think we're going to do yes we're going to purl two together in order to close the gap. So slip your needle in there as if to purl and then catch the next one. Purl those two together. Purl one. All right, turn it back over and you see you've got those, you have your decrease right there. Now we're gonna check where our slip stitches is because I wanna make sure that, that I maintain the texture if I can. Now here you can see you can see that I have my slip stitch column going up right here. That's on the second stitch in. So I'm going to go ahead and slip as if to purl for the first one. Then I'm going to knit that because I need that integrity. And then I'm going to knit the next one as well. And then I'm going to slip this one because I can tell that we're back in our established pattern. So I did have to knit two in a row and that's okay. It's not something you're really going to notice once you get going. Once you wear the sock, you're not really going to notice that you did that. So I've knitted to one before the gap and I'm going to slip, slip, knit to close the gap and then knit the next one. Turn your work. Slip the first one and purl across until you get to one before the gap. You're gonna continue doing these two knit and purl row sequences. You're gonna keep doing these until you run out of stitches on each side. 
and then you'll notice that you've actually made a little cup or, for your heel. All right, I've got to the gap, so I'm gonna purl those two together and purl one. All right, now we started with 13 on our ends, remember, and now we have two, four, six, eight, we only have nine. So we're getting there. So you're gonna continue doing that back and forth until you get to the end. It may or may not work out evenly, it depends on how many stitches you start with, but you can start to see that we're creating a little, a little cup for the back of your heel. All right, so continue doing that, and I'll show you what mine looks like after I get all my short rows done. Check it out, I'm on my last sequence of rows. I've made this nifty little triangular cup, and I only have one stitch left on this each end. And that's okay, it seems a little awkward at first, but that's okay. And so what I need to do here is just slip the first one like normal, and then I'm going to slip and knit my way across. And you'll see when we get over here, we're gonna do our um, slip, slip, knit, decrease. And normally we do the slip, slip, knit, and then we knit the next one. Well, we're going to be running out of stitches, so we're not going to be able to knit the next one. But that's okay. We're just going to not worry about that. And you just do your decrease to close the gap and then turn your work. Okay. So I'm going to go slip, slip, knit. And we're going to take up that last one, closing our last gap. And then there's not another stitch here to knit. So that's all right, though. We're just going to go ahead and turn, turn your work. <clears throat> it takes me a minute sometimes to readjust all my yarn and needles and stuff. Um, in front of the camera, I have this little tripod that I try to knit around. <laughs> so that's a little challenging sometimes. Um, all right, so thanks for your patience with the fiddling. So slip that just like normal. Pull your way across, and when we de do our last decrease to close the gap by purling two together, we will not have an extra stitch to purl, and that's all right. All right, we'll purl back, and I'll show you what this is looking like. It's pretty cool. I always feel like it's a little bit of magic when I turn the heel. I mean, I realize that it's perfectly logical. It feels magical, however. And if it's the first time you've done it, when you're done and you look at it and you've made this little cup for your heel, it's cool. Okay, we're purling those two together to do our last decrease. Now look at that. Isn't that nifty? Right? So that's right where your heel's gonna sit. How cool is that? Nice. Okay, so now our goal is to pick up these edge stitches and then start knitting up. The way we're gonna do that is we need to begin picking up our stitches on the left side. So we're just gonna, um, yeah, you have a choice here. You can keep the slip, slip stitch pattern if you choose to, or you can go ahead and abandon that at this point if you want. I will say, if you keep it, I would suggest that if you want to do that for a little while up the back of your heel, you can do that, but you're going to want to put a marker here and a marker here so that you're only going to do the slip stitch pattern on these heel stitches here. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to do it one more time on my way back across, and then I'm going to be done with that. But, you know, do what works for you. You are the boss of your knitting. Now, the important thing here is to be able to see the chain stitches that you made before. You can use a crochet, a tiny crochet hook if you like to, to um, pick up your stitches. I don't usually do that, but here, let's illustrate. Here is the first one, okay? Here's the first one, chain stitch. Here's my second one, okay, do you see that? What I'm going to do now is go ahead and pull this needle through. So I want to have my yarn straightened out coming off the back of my last knitted stitch, just like normal. I'm going to curl this cable around here, and I'm going to take this right-hand needle, and I'm going to put it into my first chain stitch, which is nice that I can see this with colors. So that's the lavender one's the one on my needle, and the pink one is this one underneath, 
right there. All right, so I'm gonna go into that first one. And then I'm gonna wrap my yarn and I'm just gonna knit right into that. Okay, I'm gonna go into this next one here. This is where your progressive lens is. Now it's really easy to get this rolled over, so you wanna make sure that you're rolling it and you're knitting into the back edge. Like, it was tempting to go right there, but that's not right, because that's the half of the next stitch over. So we wanna make sure we go all the way back to this, whoops, sorry, all the way back to this back edge, all right? Knit into that. And again, you can use a crochet hook. If you wanna take a tiny crochet hook and put it right in there, and then draw the loop through as if it's a knit stitch, and then put it on your knitting needle, that's totally fine as well. I just prefer to go ahead and do it this way. So maybe I could center myself for you. Okay, so we're gonna knit into, put the needle in there, and knit right into that. Okay. You're gonna go all the way down the line of your chain stitches doing that. That's how we're gonna pick it up, pick up stitches and knit the other direction. You know, it is a little bit exacting, but it's really not so difficult. It just takes a little time. It's not Netflix knitting, and it's not something you're going to rush through. I'm going to try not to be interrupted. But see how that does make a nice edge. See? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pick, up, put, pick them up all the way down to this bottom corner, and then I'll show you how we're going to avoid a hole. Yay! Doesn't that look nice? All right, so I've picked up all those chain stitch edge, edge stitches all the way down here, and now I'm gonna work my, work my cable through and my needle through there, it's a little bit tight. These needles have been around for quite some time. They're a little bit bent. The join is not as smooth as it once was, but I'll make it work. All right, now I'm gonna knit back across the top of my foot stitches, keeping in pattern. And when I do that, I could simply go ahead and start, but sometimes, on an occasion, you'll get a little wee little hole right there where that bar goes across. So just as a little extra insurance, I like to avoid that possibility of a little hole. I hate holes on my socks, so I pick that up with my, whoops, let me show you that again. I think I got myself off camera. I pick that up with my left needle, okay? And then I turn it around, slip it onto the right hand needle, and then go in, go in, put it, place it back on the left needle as if you're knitting. And did you see how I inverted the, or swap places with my needles from top to bottom? And then I'm just gonna knit right into that. So I've twisted a stitch and knitted, and that is going to help close that gap, okay? Then where I'm at in my pattern, there's my purl stitch that I always begin with. And I am just gonna knit my way across, I think. I'm trying, yep, I'm trying to remember where I was in my pattern. Whether I was on a knit row or a knit for a purl two row. But anyway, I'm on a knit straight across. So I'm gonna knit across the top of the foot stitches. That'll put us back on the left side of our gusset. Well, left if I'm looking at it this way right if you're looking at it from the back of the heel, but semantics. And then we'll be ready to pick up those stitches. Now, one could argue that I've messed up my stripe sequence because here's lavender and then there's lavender again. If that bothers you, then I guess you could, you could cut your yarn and splice it and make that all work out so that you were actually gonna start back here with the, I guess, the darker purple. I don't know. I never really worried about it all that much, but I guess if that annoys you, that your stripes are out of their sequence, then you can cut your yarn and start again so that works out. I am OCD about some things, but that would not be one of them. All right, I'm almost back across here. The 36 stitches of my top. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now particularly because I've knitted an extra row, that makes this whole side a little bit higher, if you will, than what I'm picking up here. 
So I always feel that it is kind of important to avoid any holes, particularly when I get to this side. And I will do that in the same way by picking up this little bar and turning it. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and pull this cable through. Now, this little curl, it's okay at this point if you want to combine the back of the heel stitches with the gusset stitches that you picked up. If you want to combine those, I'm going to. But remember how I talked about if you want to maintain the slip stitch pattern on the back of your heel, you want to put a marker here. So that would be the reason for that is once I pull this cable in and mush all these together, you can kind of see that right now. But if you want to maintain that and if you know where you want to maintain the slip stitch pattern, then feel free to do that. So I'm going to pull this cable through and I'm going to pick up that bar just so I can avoid a hole. I'm going to add a little stitch there, which you'll see we will decrease that out right away. But it will go, um, it will serve us well to not have a hole there. Okay, so I'm going to pick up this first bar. I'm going to turn it. I'm coming in underneath here, going up in like that because I'm twisting that loop to put it on. Then I'm going to knit it. All right. Okay, go in right there and knit it, and I'm gonna make sure that that lavender, my working yarn is pulled up snug. Now I'm gonna go in, and I'm gonna make a little bit of an extra stitch right there, because I, that is not necessarily a chain stitch, my first chain stitch, but I did that because I definitely don't want a hole on that side. And then I'm gonna pick up my first chain stitch and knit into it. Now, are you getting to where you can see those a little easier? I'm going in, knitting underneath that chain stitch. It looks like a crocheted edge, doesn't it? When really all we did was slip the first stitch to make, make it appear, to make that happen. Now, you're going to have, maybe you'll have the same number of stitches you picked up on your right and left side of your heel flap. Maybe you won't. We're not, you don't need to be too concerned. If they're the same, then great. If they're not the same, it's okay. We can adjust and account for that when we do the decreases as we go around and we decrease that gusset back down to our original number of stitches, which is what we're gonna start doing as soon as we get the rest of these picked up. Okay, I've got all these picked up on this side as well. Now, somewhere along the line with my cable, I lost my loopy on this side, you know, where it comes out and loops around. Now, I did intentionally suck up the loop and, and combine the stitches here and here, but I lost my loop here. But no matter, because I know what I did. Remember, I picked up all my gusset stitches, and then I had my first purl stitch before my ribbing pattern. So I'm going to bend my needle and pull my loop back through right before this purl stitch. All right, I can fix it. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna work work my cable back through here. Now I'm, I'm back to the my, back of my heel. Now this is gonna feel a little tight for a minute, you know, a little tight this way, um, but it's not bad. What I'm going to do now is just simply knit across. I'm choosing not to carry on with that slip stitch pattern, so I'm just going to knit straight across. So again, to do to accomplish our decreases, we're going to do a two row repeat sequence. We're going to have a decrease row and a plain row. So this once you get in the groove, this actually goes really fast. What I'm doing now is just going to knit all the way to the end of where I picked up all those stitches until I have three left on the needle. Three left on the needle, and then I'm simply going to knit two together, knit two together, and knit the last one. Okay, that's it for your decrease round on that side. Then we're going to just knit keeping in pattern across the top of the foot stitches. See, this is a little bit tight. I'm working my my needle through here and it is a little tight on the corners but it will loosen up as we go along and as we start decreasing down that gusset 
we have a really big number of stitches right now because we picked up all these extras and that's how come knitting your heel flap longer and taller increases the number of stitches you picks up and therefore increases the diameter of the sock that goes over your instep. So now I'm simply going to knit across the top of my foot stitches keeping in pattern like I have been and then we will decrease our other side. This looks super awkward, you know, you're shoving around the cables and you're pushing all the stitches, particularly these heel stitches and everything back up on this needle and it is very bunchy and it's awkward. Um, as you continue your decrease rounds though, it will get easier, I promise. So on this side, when we decrease, we're gonna go ahead and, sorry about that, we're gonna go ahead and knit the first one. Then you're gonna do your left leaning decrease where you slip, slip, knit. So you want to remember that you want your decreases to lean toward the heel. Okay, lean back toward the heel. So this way you can remember that if you don't have it memorized, you can remember that because we're, we're going to make it lean to the left back toward the heel. And when we're on the other side, we want it to lean toward the right because at that point we will have knitted around the corner and we have our sock this way and we want these to lean to the right. Hopefully that makes sense. However, you're only going to do your decreases every other round. So since I just did a decrease round, now I'm just going to knit around plain. Uh, one plain go around. And you'll know if you forget. Um, some people like to put a marker at this point, you know, in the center in the back, denoting the beginning of the round. Um, I don't usually do that just because I can tell whether I've decreased the previous time or not. You can see it. You can see if you've, you know, obviously you can tell those two are knitted together. And on this side, you can see where we did that before. You can see that those two are knitted, or yeah, these two are right here. Those two right there are knitted together. So if I've knitted that together, then I'm just going to do a plain one. Okay, so we're just going to alternate those two, decrease round and a plain round. All right, one thing I think it's important to note is every time we, we come from a cable and we start another side, it's important to, you know, tug this, snug that up so you don't end up with a loose join there. That's why some people with using double pointed needles end up getting a ladder. Um, so you want to tug on this pretty firmly and then also it's equally important to do that with the next stitch so the first two are really key in locking that down and, and making it so that you don't have a hole at the beginning and the ends of your gussets okay you want to make sure that you've see and I do have a tiny bit of one um, tiny bit of one there that I actually may go back and and uh, fill that in with some darning later or not but it's important that you Tug that first and second stitch firmly when you're coming around the corner, when you're um, changing from your sole needle to the top of the foot needle and vice versa. All right, you can see I'm well established into the gusset rounds. Things are looking pretty good. You can see how this is coming together and how it's going to be. Um, these are, you know, this whole section here is my alternating decrease and plain knitting rounds. So you can see also that this is going to take some time. It's um, several inches of knitting to get everything decreased back down to the original number of stitches that we have. So I still have my um, 36 stitches across the top of the foot needle. And then as I alternate my decreasing and plain rounds, I will eventually decrease all of this back down to 36 as well. And then after I do that, um, I will establish the this same ribbing pattern on the back so that we have the whole ribbing pattern around the entirety of the leg. Okay, so just carry on with that this week. Um, that's quite a bit. You know, that's a lot. The heel flap, turning the heel, and doing the gusset and the decreases, that's a lot of work. That's a good 30% of your entire sock, at least. So carry on with that. Um, as always, be sure to leave comments if you're inclined, ask any questions, join the Facebook group, and carry on. And remember, you're the boss of your knitting. And if you don't feel like that just yet, I'll help you get there. All right. Take care, you guys. Have a good week.